Hello and welcome to the EVIT website. At EVIT we never underestimate what medical educators, students and learning technologists think about virtual patients. After all, spreading the word about virtual patients is one of the core activities of the EVIT programme. Here we met with Dr James Bateman, a specialist registrar in rheumatology and internal medicine. James teaches at the Warwick University School of Medicine and has a special interest in Web 2.0 and internet based learning applications. He is the founder of the Medical Educator UK website and is also doing a Master's in Medical Education. In the first of a series of short interviews, James talks with Dr David Davis from the EVIT programme about the role of virtual patients and the challenges of integrating them into the medical curriculum. So hi James, we've previously looked at some virtual patients on the computer to get an idea about what they are and their, their functionality. As a clinical educator at Warwick Medical School and the University Hospital here, what role do you think virtual patients have in teaching on the graduate medical students? Yeah, I think that they potentially have a very important role. Um, we've got very well developed um, IT facilities here at Warwick and the way that virtual patients could be used in all sorts of different domains really, I mean there's just such an opportunity there to help educate them in terms of um, their undergraduate studies on clinical areas, on examination areas, therapeutics. Uh, there's a really a lot of potential there um, to use virtual patients to good effect. So uh, no, it's interesting you say that because some of the evidence we've gathered from surveys of asking people who are currently using virtual patients, they tell us that actually most areas of the curriculum could benefit from a virtual patient approach. Do you see any limitations of using virtual patients in the curriculum? Yeah, I mean, obviously one of the concerns about having um, virtual patients is you potentially taking away um, student patient contact. I think um, when we look at the students here, they're spending a lot of the time on the wards, so that might be a potential limitation if you're concerned about taking students away from the ward areas. But I don't think that's where the virtual patients would be used. I think using them to supplement um, uh, education um, and supplement the, the training sessions that we're doing would be really a very valuable, um, a very valuable uh, resource. For example, if I'm doing some teaching about um, uh, the management, the emergency management of an uh, acute myocardial infarction, um, if those students could have um, almost work their way through that patient's journey up until that emergency presentation, that would be a really very valuable tool and something I think the students could learn a lot from. So that sounds, that's interesting James, because that sounds like a, a challenge really to curriculum planners, that if they're going to take a, a virtual patient approach in an undergraduate course, for example, that it has a, a, a specific role, but perhaps doesn't replace all of clinical uh, experience and clinical teaching. I think that's really important. I think um, it's actually getting the clinicians that are doing the teaching and delivering the teaching in the different specialties to buy into virtual patients and to have somewhere where they can see the virtual patients as fitting into their own clinical area, be it neurology or cardiothoracic surgery. The clinicians need to understand how the patients are going to be used. I think if they can see a clear uh, way in which they can be integrated into the existing curriculum, um, then they're much more likely to embrace the, the technology. Um, that is a big challenge when you're dealing with a very diverse range of uh, surgeons and clinicians. For further information about the EVIT programme, please explore the EVIT website. And for news and updates, you can follow us on Twitter on www.twitter.com forward slash virtual patients or you can even join our Facebook group at www.facebook.com forward slash virtual patients. <laughs>